Hello, Joshua from PeerCharter.com. Today we're going to discuss part two of Olympic lifting for baseball. In part one, I explained to you how it was very uh, detrimental to the athlete that you do not want to Olympic lift for multiple reasons. Um, number one being the injury uh, rate, the chance of injury is extremely high. The training effect is absolutely none, meaning that what you do in Olympic lifting will never transfer over to pitching velocity or hitting power. That is completely proven um, through scientific research, regardless of what anyone else says. So I want you to understand that. So I want to start with uh, topic number one today. Are there alternatives? Absolutely. You can train triple extension, hip extension, um, hip explosion through an alternative ways of lifting without sacrificing your body to potential injury. Uh, Olympic lifting has a ton of negatives with absolutely little positive. If you want to mimic the Olympic lifting, there are alternative ways that reduce the, the amount of risk to almost nothing with the same amount of positive. Like I said, you never want to solely stick to this type of training as your um, staple training regimen. It, it will not work. You can mix it in. You can mix alternative training of this sort into the whole pie, as you've heard me say before. This is a small piece, and I don't want it to be even, I don't want you to get the, uh, the idea that's actually a large chunk because it's not. You, there's too many negative factors when coming into this type of training that will not translate to pitching velocity or hitting power. There are much better ways to um, spend your time in training while limiting the amount of uh, stress to your body. Because ultimately what you're doing is you have to be wise when you train. You have to analyze risk and reward. It's a very simple business principle, but it's also a very simple um, athletic principle that you need to apply. What is the risk from our, what is, what is the risk that I've got to intake? What is the reward that I could possibly have? If the risk outweighs the reward, then it needs to be removed from your training regimen, especially for athletic performance. Because if you're, if you're specifically wanting to get an, uh, a scholarship, train at the highest level, play professional, you can't, you can't throw the dice and just say, well, if I get injured, you know, that's, that's not going to be good. Um, or, or take that risk. It's not a crapshoot to where you just, you know, you're just blindly just hoping that you <clears throat> stay healthy. There's a, uh, there's a reason why uh, the injury rate in uh, Major League Baseball has went up over 400% in the last 10 to 15 years. It's, it's horrible training methods um, introduced from the highest level all the way down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And like I said, the highest level, um, I go into Major League Baseball clubs and I've seen the uh, training that goes on and it's horrendous. And uh, you wonder why million dollar athletes are ripping their, their arms apart, they're having injuries in their legs, their joints are killing them. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, the, the, um, the wrong information that's being fed out there. So I'm gonna help you shape your mind specifically to understand how you should train um, so you enjoy it, you get more out of it, you don't waste time, and, and ultimately you reduce the chance of injury so you can actually perform better on the field. All right, so number one, like I said, are there alternatives? Exactly. Um, there are plenty of alternatives, and I can show you that. Um, contact me, um, and I can create a customized training routine for you based on your strengths and weaknesses. That's the absolute best way when you're looking for an elevation in performance is not just giving a one-size-fits-all training regimen, but no, individualizing the routine based on the person. That's the only way you're gonna see substantial results in a, in a quick time fashion. So contact me, info at pitcharter.com, and we can talk more. Position player or pitcher, doesn't matter. Okay, number two, this is where I wanna, I wanna bring out some, um, some info for you right here. Very technical to master. Okay, one of the reasons we don't want an Olympic lift is because it's a professional sport in and of itself. It's a skill set, and it takes a very long time to master this skill set. So, for example, let me read this um, to you, and this is going to 
relate to number three, the Chinese Olympic coach. The Chinese Olympic coach, let's see, all right. Chinese Olympic coach said that if an athlete wanted to become, a, if he wanted to become an Olympic athlete, he would have to at least train four years, mastery the technique. It take four years for someone to become adequate at the Olympic lifts. This guy has served uh, as an elite performance coach who has helped several Chinese Olympic teams, guys who specifically, their whole goal is nothing but Olympic lifting. He says that if an athlete is well coached starting in junior high, then it might, okay, hear the word might be okay at the Olympic lifts when he enters college. We're talking about an eighth grader learning technique. He may not be ready until he's in college. And the word might be okay. There's two words there, might and okay, that completely tell you that that's not even the norm. Meaning that four years may not be enough for the average person to learn the technique to master. That is insane. So it takes over four years to master the technique and the form in Olympic lifting just to be ready to be able to Olympic lift. Just to become a beginner, it takes four years at least. And that's minimum, bare minimum, four years just to learn. So don't think you're going to go to some place and have them cram uh, within a couple weeks or a weekend the forms of Olympic lifting and, and, ex and expect you to actually be good at it. No, that's, that's not going to happen. I've had many uh, baseball players from every level come to me from programs that implement Olympic lifting. And everything you hear me talk about in these three parts, I'm going to explain to you these, this, is, this is the truth. They come to me and it did, number one, it didn't work. Number two, they were in pain. Number three, they had all kinds of issues that I had to deal with to restructure their training routine in order to get velocity out of them. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a, it's a mess. But if, if the Olympic weightlifting team is telling you it takes four years for your technique and form to master, a minimum of four years, you don't have that time as a baseball player, okay? You don't have that time. Why would you spend that much time perfecting a skill in a training area to implement into your skill of playing baseball? Okay, two totally different um, skill sets. Why would you spend that much time trying to master something just to use it as a training effect when you need to spend more of that time mastering this skill set because it takes a ton of time to master baseball playing? Baseball is a totally different sport than football, basketball, anything you can think of. The hardest thing to do in the world in any sport is hit a baseball coming at you over 90 miles per hour. It's, it's, that's the hardest absolute thing to do. You need to master that skill set. Pitching, 90 miles per hour plus, you need to master that skill set. Then you can use your time way more valuable in practicing your skill than trying to master technique for something just to get a training effect. That's not, now remember, that's not even gonna work, okay? Olympic lifting or the alternative to Olympic lifting is a small effect to your training regimen that is not even gonna be implemented in the way I train you consistently. So if I'm barely gonna use it in your training, why in the world would you, ma would you take time to master something over four to six years just to be able to use it once in a while. And, and to be honest with you, like I said, there's alternatives. I'm not going to have you do Olympic lifting that way because it's too much risk, not enough reward. It doesn't even transfer to velocity, impossible. I get guys that gain six miles per hour in two weeks and never even touch Olympic lifting. Because it's, just, it's just insane. One of my players went from 86 to 92, two weeks on his first professional contract. I never even met the kid. I understand the biokinesiology mechanics, what angles need to be created. I created something for him very quick, very simple, and he implemented it in two weeks. He was, he was on a professional team. Number three, we already covered this. The Chinese Olympic coach said, hey, this is it's just too much. You cannot learn 
or master um, the form in enough time. It's just, it's too, it's too hard. You won't get the full benefit of the exercise. Uh, most people, like I said, they don't know how to properly Olympic lift. Um, it's gonna be bad for their knees or joints. It becomes their upper body movement. The hips are doing most of the work, the ankles. Your upper body should just come along for the ride, but in reality, when people are still learning this stuff, it, you know, they're completely doing it wrong. So you're gonna see a lot of injury uh, happen there. Um, you know, like I said, bad form increases your chance of um, injury. Back pain, you name it, et cetera. The list goes on and on and on. These are professionals. The Olympic coach, like I said, these are professionals, guys who just specifically target Olympic lifting. The only thing Olympic lifting is going to do for you is help you be an Olympic lifter. It's not going to translate properly. Um, some people say, well, it's good for basketball. It's good for football. No, it's not. Okay, there are alternative ways to this. Unless you're planning to be an Olympic lifter, you should not Olympic lift regardless. I don't care who's doing it. I don't care what Major League Baseball player is doing it. I don't care who's implementing it, who's pressing it, who's pushing it, what magazine says it. It's, it's not going to help you, okay, in baseball. Um, people say it's perfect for a sprinter because of the explosion that the sprinter creates off the starting block. People say it's great for a basketball player's vertical jump. Well, guess what? Yes, there is a better train of, training effect for a sprinter and a basketball player for Olympic lifting. But remember this, this much risk, that much reward. Is there, is there something that can mimic the Olympic lifting to help the basketball player or the football player accomplish his goal without increasing chance of injury? Absolutely. There are specific um, ways to train a basketball player and a football player to get more vertical jump. I have guys that can gain three to what, six inches in one session, not, not weeks, two hours. Three to six inches on your vertical in two hours because there's a scientific way to go about it to cause the muscles to be able to do that. Now, that's a whole other story, but like I said, there are alternative ways. Don't risk your chance doing something that is not going to work. Contact me at info at pitchhard.com. Go to my website, pitchhard.com. If you're a position player, specifically email me. I will create something for you. If you're a pitcher, you already know what to do. There's, there's sections there for you. Um, my website is geared more toward the pitcher, but I train everybody, so don't get confused. If you are a position player, contact me and I will help you go to the next level.